fans. Right. There should be one fandom under BL. Oh. <laughs> one nation. It sounded like you were one saying nation like, under one God. nation under Indivisible. God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm triggered all of a sudden. I have to stand up. <laughs> we are. Um... Hi guys! Welcome to Lovecast Boys Love Podcast. I'm your host Pixie, and with me are my co-hosts Alexa and Kayla. Hello. Hey. Yay! We are <laughs> yeah. finally doing uh, just us uh, episode. We haven't <laughs> done one in a while, so this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's mm-hmm. it's literally been like a month at least if not like a month and a half yeah something like that Mm. so just been doing interviews and then short little breaky break in there yeah (laughs) yep so today we are doing a bl 101 about fandom wars which is always interesting (laughs) (laughs) so even if you know how fandom wars um work stay tuned we have like a lot to say about it (laughs) and some tea kayla reassured us about (laughs) 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 before we go into that we just wanted to talk about our exciting news if you didn't watch our live um a couple of weeks ago we announced that we are fundraising for a trip to thailand (laughs) Yay. Yay. The whole team is going, us three and Heather, and we will be doing interviews, um, hopefully like get some <clears throat> people with us on, on, on trips around Bangkok and vlogging and content, fun stuff, games, we got a lot of fun ideas from viewers during our live, mm-hmm. so yeah, mm-hmm. we have a lot of we have a lot of fun stuff up our sleeve that we want to try and execute. Yeah. If you want to get like more details about our thoughts around it, you can go watch our live on uh, YouTube. It's still up, so go watch. Um, we've already ha- we have a Kickstarter to help raise the money for it. We uh, since um, funding such a trip is expensive, yeah. <laughs> especially we're coming from three different parts of the world yeah so yeah so yeah we have a kickstarter so um if you want to check that out the links will be in the description um and we have a lot of fun um benefits yeah Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean i think our whole thing is like if we're gonna do this trip we want to make sure our audience is part of every aspect of it so a lot of the rewards are tied into Um, aspects of the trip like helping plan interviews or exclusive polaroids and things like that Um, and also there's stuff that's just tied to the podcast in general like you could host Mm -hmm. an episode with us if you donated at that specific tier Mm -hmm. but yeah I think we really want to just like make sure if we make this trip happen that you guys are a part of every single aspect and that we're doing things that you guys want to see us do and like not just doing it for our own of course it's all part of our own interests but like we also want to make sure we're putting stuff out there that the people that made the trip happen are gonna be happy to see so Mm. i think that's just like our whole motivator going through it yeah and i mean the whole two weeks is just gonna be like podcast like we're not gonna go to a beach and lie there for (laughs) (laughs) we're not Yeah, it's so, like a content creating trip. It's not going to be like yeah. a vacation. I mean, we'll still yeah. be in like a really cool country, like doing stuff for the podcast that we really enjoy doing. But like, yeah, we're not going to be like chilling on the beach, tanning or, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, people will probably find it interesting to see us dying from heat stroke. <laughs> <laughs> you mean yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the least um your Norwegian blood is probably the least um suited mm, for true. Thai summer. <laughs> pale skin. Thai weather. <laughs> yeah, no, we need but, to uh, we need to carry around an umbrella for Pixie because it's yeah, gonna be... I mean, 
I, I'm, I'm, I've been like super confident about being able to deal with the heat, but <laughs> at the same time, I'm the person in summer here that um, can't be out in the sun too long because I get like physically ill <laughs> from it. <laughs> Mm. We're gonna be we're gonna be babysitting Pacey the whole time to make sure <laughs> between the heat and the spicy food, the trip is yeah. gonna be to oh, keep pi- goal is keep Pixie out of the hospital during this trip. I thought you were gonna yeah. say keep Pixie alive, which that is too. a step further. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this is good. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting <laughs> to say the least, but I think it's gonna be yeah. Fun. I, 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 we have a lot of uh, good plans and we do have like some confirmed stuff that we want to do, um, like meeting Jamie who wrote Hot Bammy. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So check out our Kickstarter in the link yes. below if you want to. Thank you to everyone who's Please. already donated. We are <clears throat> already at 16% covered and that's mm. just about amazing. a week yeah it's mm-hmm. a little under well just under a week since we launched it so mm-hmm. it's a good number and we got to keep the steam going so yes. hopefully and we will we be can. doing yes. more lives on youtube coming up and a, like a fundraising stream as well uh for a couple of hours the date will be announced on social media when we get there um and we like do lives when we can on instagram or tiktok or whatever so make sure to like follow our social media so you don't miss out yes mm-hmm. awesome yes okay so back to fandom wars <laughs> so we had some issues trying to find like a definition of what actually like a fandom war is like an official definition um i think we all like know what it means most of yeah. us who's been on social media who's yeah. in fandom but i feel like we've all probably witnessed at least one but then i remember like there are people who watch and li- or listen to the podcast that like aren't on social media otherwise like a lot of people who aren't on twitter or instagram and that kind of stuff which i feel like at least in this modern age is where the majority of fandom wars are going down so Mm -hmm. a lot of people might not be familiar with a lot of the bl fandom drama and fandom wars that have happened over the years so yeah yeah so um one explanation is two long-running shows or two star actors inspired dueling fandoms Fans of one are expected to become fan haters of the other and vice versa. Uh, The contrasting merits of both will rarely be acknowledged. And another one is just ship war, uh, an an intense and sometimes hostile disagreement between shippers of rival ships in the fandom. Yeah. So... Basically, if you're a fan of something and someone else is a fan of something else and you argue. <laughs> yeah. Yes. A lot of times it's stuff that there's just like this unspoken rivalry of. Like yeah. <clears throat> when I found the definition for fandom wars, which um, mm-hmm. the site was like TV tropes, I think was the site it was on. But there was like a bunch of examples of different historical fandom wars mainly from like western media um Mm -hmm. but like a lot of them were like shows that are similar in nature so Mm -hmm. i think that's like especially if they're airing at the same time historically Mm -hmm. like i think one of the big ones was like lost versus heroes so like shows that have like a very similar like I guess like supernatural element to them and they were airing at the same time and like they had a similar level of popularity and but like the one fandom wanted theirs to be the more popular show so Mm -hmm. I think historically a lot of it comes Mm -hmm. from like that kind of beef between the shows yeah kind of thing yeah 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 I remember when I was younger there was like um these wars uh between who like uh, people who liked um and sync and people who like yeah uh what's the other yeah. one 
uh, um, Backstreet Boys. Westlife? Oh, Backstreet, oh, Backstreet Boys. Boys. Yeah. Backstreet and Boys. And Westlife was one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, 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 yeah, it was a mess. <clears throat> like, no one could like everything. Like, it was just like, you yeah. like one? <laughs> yeah, you couldn't be fans of both. No. <laughs> you couldn't get away with being at least not publicly yeah, like you had to like align with one publicly and be like this mm-hmm. is my this is mm-hmm. my group and i'm sticking mm-hmm. with it type thing yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah so so fandom wars have existed long before the internet basically yeah. but mm-hmm. uh now that we have the internet it's getting louder and especially like places like twitter is general if you are on the wrong side of twitter it's 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 a full out war like <laughs> i do not understand how people can manage so much negativity in their life <laughs> mm, me neither. so yeah yeah. I, yeah yeah i think with twitter twitter culture is like this this whole thing of its own that really just like encourages people being really I don't know hostile I guess is maybe the word Mm -hmm. I'm looking for um Mm -hmm. being very edgy with the way they reply to people especially if they don't um agree with someone and like people do say some really like fucked up shit on there like there's a lot of like shitty people on Twitter but a lot of the times it's just like an innocent person saying an innocent thing and like yeah. if it if twitter gets a hold of it and it goes viral if you're scrolling through those Scroll comments like you just else. see some of the like most out of pocket and unnecessary mm-hmm. responses ever and that's just like twitter in general so you bring like fandom territory mm-hmm. terra territorial energy i guess that yeah. already kind of exists mm-hmm. within fandoms and then put that on twitter and it mm-hmm. just like gets exacerbated so yeah. much more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the worst part of fandom wars that I see is just like someone is just hyping up whoever they like and then get bombarded with hate for mm. being oh. like just, they're not saying anything bad about anyone else. Um, ne- they're not saying something negative about anyone else, but then it's like, oh, X and X did it better or yeah. X and X is whatever, you know, type thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm. it's kind of surprising. Like I've been in been an army for a couple of years, and I remember back in the day when I was on Twitter army. Um, I remember seeing like uh, there was a time where they were posting like army was posting a lot, a lot of like BTS paved way, kind of thing, and yeah. every time that comment, I think came every up, K-pop stan has seen those K-pop tweets. K-pop stan <laughs> mm-hmm. came under there and just like yeah no like pink paved the way or whatever paved the way and i'm just like that wasn't the point let them have fun you can write <laughs> on your twitter they write on their twitter don't like why fight <laughs> yeah 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 army twitter and k-pop twitter is like k-pop that's, twitter thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's like the ultimate like beef is like mm-hmm. k-pop twitter in general i feel like yeah. it's just like i the mean peak example of online internet beef yeah the problem with twitter is that it's so easy to just write whatever you're thinking the second you're thinking it mm-hmm. so it's very very reactionary so what it should like have like a timer it should like you should write the tweet and it should come up like okay we'll post in five minutes <laughs> and then, like, you still want to tweet this <laughs> mm, that's that yeah a great it's... Fi- fix elon are you listening this would actually help <laughs> he's not he's just he's not he's, he's, not. he's making everything worse yeah he's not listening God. Yeah, that especially is crazy to me because I'm one of those people who have to reread and overthink Mm -hmm. every single word that I put Mm -hmm. out. So I can't imagine being like so extremely reactionary that the second I think of something, I'm posting it publicly for like thousands of people to see. Like, mm, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm very reactionary, but I'm aware of it. I might slip up at times, but still, I know. No, I I generally know that I should not write something this second I think about it, so I tend to wait. 
yeah and tend to check in with people i might be like (laughs) i I mean sometimes (laughs) yeah sometimes things just make you angry and i feel like it's okay to have an emotional reaction to stuff yeah i mean whatever you're reacting in the safe comfort of your own home or with your friends or whatever is fine but you're putting something publicly on twitter is like shouting it out to the world (laughs) yeah it's scary and especially when the people you are sort of if you're in a fandom and like if it's a k-pop group or if it's like actors in the bl fandom um they can see what you're writing like they can Mm. actually see it more times than not they are actually gonna see it so don't write like they don't see it yeah i think you know like if anything we've learned that like having a private space is fine like i know a lot Mm. of people Oh, now they have like Twitter circles or they have a private Twitter where they'll just go and put all their beef out on. But like, just because you don't like at someone in something doesn't mean they're not Mm going to see it, especially with the way Twitter works. Like Mm -hmm. they will show it on everyone's feed of the person who likes that person. And then you're like, then you're in for it. So yeah, I think there is just like an element of like, just the way Twitter is set up is Mm -hmm. like designed to show things that way like i get i get so many like recommended tweets for things and people that have values that completely don't align with mine no matter how many times i click i'm not interested in this like it's just Mm -hmm. the way the algorithms work because they know um creating that kind of beef like Mm -hmm. making posts go viral like that and type thing is like it's generating stuff for the site so you know I mean, when I had my army Twitter account, I got to a point, like, I curated my timeline very Mm -hmm. well. Like, I, whenever there was, like, a big, like, anyone said anything negative, I just blocked. Mm -hmm. I had a long Mm -hmm. blocking list. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But, like, the people I followed and interacted with, I would only do that with people who didn't start, like, unnecessary shit. Yeah, And even if they were just commentating on unnecessary stuff happening, like fandom wars happening around them and what they thought about that, I just like, no, I, I don't even want to know what people are arguing about. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. really not worth it. <clears throat> I think like, um, I think the block and mute buttons on websites are like mm-hmm. your greatest asset if you want to stay out of... Like, I, like, I've had to block people I was, like, mutuals with or whatever. And, like, yeah, there was a point when I was, like, earlier, I've been in fandom for for a long time. And so, like, I used to feel, like, really bad about it. You know, I'd be like, well, I've been mutuals with this person on Tumblr or whatever for, like, five years now. But, like, mm-hmm. they start saying stuff that I just, like, really can't agree with. And so, like, mm-hmm. I eventually had to get to the point where I'm, like... I don't like this, so I'm going to have to block you or at least unfollow you. And now I'm just like, the second someone like says something that feels a little bit iffy to me, I'm just like, I don't need that energy. Like, I think you just have to not be afraid to carry an energy that makes the space enjoyable for you. Um, And like, like you said, like, don't be afraid to be picky about who you follow. Like, I think there's a lot of weird, like, discourse, not discourse isn't the right word, but like applying for mutuals and like that kind of stuff like Mm -hmm. i don't know i think Mm -hmm. you just have to like not be afraid to curate your timeline the way you want Mm -hmm. to and not feel obligated to follow people back just because they followed you and like that kind of stuff is like how you set up a a timeline that works for you yeah yeah i um i just think people should realize that being in a fandom doesn't mean you need to be a part of all that negative stuff happening Mm -hmm. you don't need to Mm -hmm. jump the bandwagon if someone said something or the actor said something or did something or there's rumors or that person like you don't need to join in on that to be in the fandom it's Mm -hmm. it's the loud part of the fandom that's doing that um it's not the whole fandom so just like curate your timelines just 
stick to the people who actually bring the energy that you want. Because a fandom is about having fun together and, and liking something and just like enjoying yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you're in that. <clears throat> wow, Jesus. Um, <laughs> um, you're like in a fandom because you're all fans of a specific project or actor and you want to enjoy that project together. So like if you're spending your time always worrying about like what other fandoms are doing or talking about, then like it kind of gets you away from the root of why you joined that particular fandom in the first place. Yeah, and it doesn't help whoever you're a fan of if you're arguing online. Like being like a, a what do they call it? Like a keyboard warrior isn't helping whoever you're a fan of. It's just making the situation worse so yeah so um what do they usually stem from i don't i I don't know i think like (sighs) go ahead kayla i think jealousy Mm -hmm. um Mm. because um i mean some of the examples we'll get into later a lot of it, I think, stems from, like, seeing a part of a fandom that you like not getting as much, like, attention mm-hmm. or acclaim mm-hmm. than, like, another fandom or just even a different part of the same fandom you're in. Yeah, and so absolutely. you're kind of like, well, why is this thing that I like or this person that I like, why aren't they as popular or getting as many opportunities as, like, mm-hmm. this other person? So it kind of like all the jealousy just turns into like redirect or wrongly directed anger, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, yeah. I like I just every time I keep going back to like my my army days when um, there were like arguments of. Uh, like someone said okay in that song Jin didn't get as many lines as one of the other boys in the song and he's not getting enough support blah 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 not thinking about like a song is an artistic thing like having the same lines will put off the whole song Mm. for the like it's 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 not very very well thought through uh, argument but it does like i think comes from jealousy like they see the other members being more popular than the members they think is popular and it's we have like this inherent thing in us that we we can't see someone else liking something that um it's not the same thing we like right if you see someone say that they didn't enjoy that show that bl show Mm -hmm. Like, example, Kim Porsche. You guys enjoyed Kim Porsche. I didn't really enjoy it that much. <laughs> and and I like the the fandoms war will easily jump on me for not enjoying it because God forbid us being different, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think like the thing with fandom is that, like, there's a lot of excitement around, like, when you are so long in this, like, engaged in a space where, like, everyone enjoys this thing actively, and then, like, you step outside of the space and see people expressing negative opinions about it, and, like, a lot of the times there are, like, those negative opinions are valid. Like, like you said, like, people don't have to enjoy the same thing, but I think, like, when you're in that bubble of people all who do all enjoy the same thing for so long and then like someone brings in something from someone who didn't enjoy it or you step outside and see like a comment that like rubs you the wrong way for some reason I think it's like so visceral compared to the sameness of the community that you're used to that it like like ignites something in you and like Mm -hmm. like you said like it's fine like sometimes those reactionary thoughts just happen but the difference is like okay, you can have that thought and think on it and then, like, move on from it versus feeling the need to, like, come at someone for having that thought. So it's like, yeah, like, I've had times where, like, someone has, 
been like unnecessarily negative or said something about a show that I enjoyed that I was like, "Mm, I don't love hearing that. But at the same time, it's like, you think on it, you have your little feelings about it. And then you let them go about their day and you go about your day. And like, you don't have to like, say something to someone like that's the biggest thing like you don't have to say something like you can just have internal thoughts but I think like when you're on social media like people think you can't just have thoughts internally you have to put them all out there because that's what it encourages (laughs) my mom always told us that if you don't have anything nice to say Don't don't say anything. (laughs) Literally, literally. They would say that in the school morning announcements every day. (laughs) And it stuck with me. Yeah. I'm like, why can't more people follow that? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I don't mind people having an opinion for themselves. Like if I go like if if Alexa goes out and says, Yeah, I really did not enjoy um what show did you did you not enjoy? Tell me. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like, know. Like, on now I'm on the spot. <laughs> I don't like, check out. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> tweets out. I didn't enjoy check out. And oh god, I didn't enjoy it either. This but is all hypothetical. If, I if did Pixie was the biggest it, checkout fan in the I world, did disagree with her. It doesn't mean that I need to tell her that. Yeah. Right. I'm, literally I, or i can't even tell them to say that oh you did yeah i like i enjoyed it mm-hmm. but but mm-hmm. it's it's the difference in like uh, me going at her and just like you're a idiot not enjoying <laughs> what's wrong with you do you have no class <laughs> it's the the difference is in like the tone because mm-hmm. a lot of people when you say that you like a show and they didn't like it, they'll be like, ooh, why did you like that show? So I get that mm-hmm. all the time with Cutie Pie, which caused me to never speak about Cutie Pie ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's just yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's really sad because like talking about what you like and don't like about stuff things it's not just like it's just a discussion it's fun in its own right it's not it shouldn't become an attack and that's what fandom wars are it's called a war because you're attacking you're not like having a like discussion conversation yeah there's no like discussion or real Mm. one of our like iconic examples are twilight and my experience with team jacob and Team Edward. Team Couldn't Edward. Remember the other team. <laughs> don't, don't at me. Okay. Was like at my time, like we were just having fun with that. I wasn't a part mm. of like any wars on the teams. Like we were just like, haha, you're like Team Edward. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I guess there was stuff online. I don't know. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of online beef about it. Like people. Like, did they read the book? Because we knew who won, right? It's not yeah, like, and like it wasn't <laughs> going to change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm like, I think that's you know, like it's fine to like not root for the like main character or whatever. Like, even if you know how the ending is, you know, yeah. that second lead syndrome that's what is always a thing. Is for yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but no, I think because. Twilight started really getting big around the same time that a lot of like these social networks like Twitter and Facebook, like the 2009, 8, 10, that kind of era, um, when those were also starting to really crop up, I feel like that's like one of the first examples I can think of where like there was a lot of online beef around them because like fan, um, social networks were like starting to gain popularity and people were starting to find them as like fandom spaces um and like I was not like a super Twilight person but like I had a lot of friends who were and who mm-hmm. like go to the premieres and like that at midnight and you know all wear the t-shirts and stuff like that and like books before that yeah that kind of stuff <laughs> I didn't do any of that for Twilight although I've done that for other <laughs> fandoms so like I've been it. there <laughs> but you know like you just hear their stories and like I don't like fighting, like people arguing in the lines and stuff like that. And it's just like, it's just like wild to think that it happens. But 
Yeah. I mean, I didn't see any of that stuff happening in the mm. like the Norwegian launch of it. I don't know. It might have like I just didn't notice because I was so excited <laughs> for myself and me with my <laughs> friends that I didn't see like the arguing. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's weird how you mm, can. Yeah, like, I remember. Sort of... No, go ahead. I I was just gonna say I remember like the fighting that I saw about Team Jacob and Edward was in school. Like I didn't see mm-hmm. any online. <laughs> It was like people, but I don't think it was ever really serious. Um, yeah, where that people was were at my, each other's like, necks. That was <laughs> my know. view of it as well. Like it wasn't that serious, but the fights they have now with like the K-pop fandoms and and BL, it's insane. Mm. Yeah. So uh, mm. typically, um, for the BL realm, most of the fandom wars are because of shipping. Like, it's a pair you ship, which, can, just like a sidebar here, I don't really understand why, because I can understand K-pop groups, because they're a group, they're gonna stay a group, they're, like, unless they're splitting up, but usually they don't. Like, it's, it's, it's a music group, right? But these are actors who act in a lot of different things, so the the possibility of a ship sticking together for a long time is really, really low. Yeah. And that's where I think it, it comes back to the way the ind- industry is set up. And there's mm-hmm. kind of a question on this later in the, um, in our like run sheet, but like the benefits of like encouraging people to get attached to these ships and how that, works in a way that helps the industry and pushes people to buy things and interact with things. So, um, like, I don't think it's all like, when we've talked a lot about before about how like a lot of BL shipping culture comes from the industry and the production companies pushing it and, Mm -hmm. um, wanting there to be like that shipping culture because it's beneficial Mm -hmm. for them. And like, in a way, I think like the shipping wars are too, um, yeah. Like the example I can think of, which was like really, really weird example, um, was from Gen Y. Um, and I don't know if either of you followed that show. Um, yeah, but I at- followed it until it got stupid. No. So it was Bass. Um, I don't even remember who the other actors are. I think one of them yeah. is big and I can't remember the other guy's name, but uh, like there was this whole, um, push at the end of season one about like who Bass's character would end up with in season two. Dune, Dune, thank you. Um, Dune or Dunn. Yeah, so was Bass was in the middle and then like Mm. there was Dune slash Dunn, I don't know how to pronounce it, and then Big. And like Bass and... Big was playing the character that got... He was was the main... Yeah, so he was like, played okay, it paired was a as different show, but it was basically two yeah, like, yeah. So was he was like the two. equivalent of the main character's love interest in the show, but like mm-hmm. Bass and Dune had been like a they had ship in chemistry. real life. Yeah, yeah. Like Star Hunter had chemistry. been pushing. Yeah, Star Hunter had been pushing them a lot in real life. So mm-hmm. when the first season ended, they basically put out this poll tied yeah. into an advertisement that like you could choose who he ended up with in the second season based on how many uh, wild. yeah based on how many like n- number of this product that you bought and so like that's like an example i think of where like the ship wars kind of like benefit like the product that they were advertising and also the show because like they convinced like obviously dune and bass won like that mm-hmm. ship in the show won because they were the mm-hmm. ones that had been promoted as a ship in real life yeah. but then like you know by using that rivalry of like, oh, well, we could make him end up with Big because that's who he's supposed to end up with in the show. Like, yeah. they kind of push the fans to buy the product and vote yeah. for him to end up with the person who he wanted. they wanted him to end up with. So, yeah. like, it is beneficial to them in some mm-hmm. formats when they use it like that. But it's... We've talked about this on episodes before. Like, the whole way that um, Thailand uh, does their promoting for BLs is mm-hmm. extremely toxic. Mm-hmm. So yeah. toxic. Just for the fans, for the actors. And you see it even more now with 
fans um, ending up like following the actors everywhere, almost causing like accidents and mm -hmm. breaking into places. It's like they're running rampant because the companies aren't setting like a firm line. Yeah. And I think that's why, like, the shipping wars and the fandom wars in BL feel so intense because mm. the industry and the fandom as a whole, like, encourages a lot of this behavior mm. that often crosses a lot of lines. So yeah. it comes into, like, the shipping aspect as well. Yeah. And I think it's so sad because we're all BL fans. So it would be so much more fun is if we were just, like, more, re like, united in our... Um, joy or like of BL <laughs> instead of arguing which ships mm. are the best like can we just like agree that we like ships and just enjoy them instead of arguing <laughs> the, yeah. the BL fandoms are so split and we should be just BL fandom not shipping fandoms right. we should be one fandom under BL oh <laughs> One nation, it sounded like you were one saying, nation like, under one God. nation under Indivisible. God. <laughs> I'm triggered all of a sudden. I have to stand up. We are, um, American culture is being forced to pledge your loyalty to the country every morning at the start of school. <laughs> we need to be more like America. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no. I Instead mean... of one nation under God, it's one fandom under BL. <laughs> With liberty and justice for all. America should, like, <laughs> take up that instead. Like, <laughs> it would be a better country. <laughs> <laughs> Pledge allegiance to BL every morning. <laughs> That would be a, like that. Uh, no, okay, we're not getting into America right now. <laughs> <laughs> Heather says we should merch one fandom under BL. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Let us know if you would buy um, that merch and maybe we'll make it happen. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so um, all of like these fandom wars are very exasperated by um, current internet culture, like mm -hmm. Twitter, like we mentioned. I think yeah. like TikTok is one as well. Oh, TikTok comments mm -hmm. are wild. I just yeah. like don't even read them anymore because like, and it's not even just like in the fandom, but like TikTok comments are scary. Like mm -hmm. people are scary in the comment sections mm -hmm. on TikTok. I think like the most positive place I've experienced is like. IG comments like we mm. surprisingly enough haven't had a lot of hate on our IG like reels and stuff like that like our, our top 5 BLs list like 98% of the comments are really nice or just people expressing what they like but mm -hmm. they're not like right out attacking uh, because of who we put in our top five. Yeah. 98% of the time. Like, it's not perfect, but... 98% <laughs> is about as good as you can get on social media, I feel like, so... Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so type of wars. Um, there are a couple of different um, wars that you see. Um, so one of them is fandom wars between shows, and we have Kayla for some tasty tea on this one. <laughs> okay, so I was informed that First and Kaltung fans and Earth and Mix fans do not like each other. This, like, so, I literally had no idea this was a thing. I did not know about this. <laughs> okay, so I got the intel for you guys. <laughs> You know, back when we did our um, Earth Mix deep dive and we mentioned mm -hmm. how um, Earth Mix doesn't seem to get like any promotion from GMM TV. Right. Like we were even trying to think like when is the last time we saw a post about mm -hmm. one of their fan meets or something and there's like nothing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where it stems from. And then the adverse is that First and Kaltung have been getting... Oh, a since lot. the eclipse, they were getting a ton of promotion, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. fan meets, events, even their merch, like selling out so fast. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah. so it caused this like rift of jealousy between them. Wow. Even though I think they're pretty like different ships with like mm. different yeah. audiences, but still Very. there's like been some kind of competition. And um yeah. I guess this was all exacerbated when um one of the screenwriters or directors, I can't remember which one, oh, they were tweeting about First and Kaltung, um, because they're like working with them on a show or something. And then the Earth Mix fans came in and were like, why do you only tweet about First and Kaltung? You also are working with Earth and Mix on this other thing, too. So um, that yeah. person got dragged into it when really it's like a problem with GMMTV neglecting yeah, Earth Mix. Say. Why are they arguing in between them? It's not their fault. Right. Because, like, I understand where they're coming from because it really is unfair how Earth Mix have been treated. Like, even, like, having their stuff put on Disney Hotstar instead of, like, YouTube. So they have been, I think, neglected in some way. But it's not... First thing, first thing, yes. It's Paul. a case of that misdirected <laughs> anger that you mentioned earlier. Like, GMMTV yeah. is obviously making choices that they think are beneficial monetarily to them at this moment. Yeah. Um, but, like, the artists don't have any control over how many Not opportunities well. they're given, how many sponsorship events they go to how many fan meets they go to like you know like the company dictates that so and even like the directors and producers and people Mm -hmm. behind the screen um don't have really much say in who they're i mean well we've seen some people have had say in who they want to work with um Mm -hmm. but like at the end of the day like the big the big person making the big decisions is that's the company no matter Mm -hmm. what but i I do think like because gmmt is known for uh, being so tight-lipped i think people don't know where to yeah because they don't anger they don't address things so yeah so it's like you're yelling into a void Mm -hmm. if you're trying to tell them to like do something so i think the fans um of earth makes sort of directed their um anger from GMM TV to first and Kowtong when they yeah. were starting to get their popularity so they yeah. had like a place to get a reaction because that's like you want attention when you're doing that so that's mainly what they wanted attention yeah. so but I still think... I it's wrong yeah yeah and I think yeah. that kind of stems into like the bigger like overarching shows as well, like not just promotions for the ship, um, so, which kind of ties it back into fandom wars between shows. Because I think I know like we've talked a lot before about like not me airing right on the back end of Bad Buddy and how mm-hmm. like the promotional difference between the two shows was very stark um, mm-hmm. and how like people started taking that out on Om and Nanan and saying like, well, oh, not me is bad, better than Bad Buddy. So why aren't more people watching Not Me compared to Bad Buddy when the promotional aspect is once again tied back to GMM TV as opposed yeah. to the quality of the show or the quality of the actors in the show? Completely off or not? Yeah, I like it. So yeah, I think a lot of the times it's like you have you like the the upset is justified, but it's just like. Mm not being directed at the people who are actually responsible for the issues. I mean, for that show, I Mm -hmm. think that, like, if you see it from, like, a business point of view, I think they expected uh, Afghan to um, kind of carry the promotion themselves Mm -hmm. just by being Afghan because they Mm -hmm. already have, like, a huge fan base and stuff. So they just Mm -hmm. expected people to know and didn't have to, like, use a lot of money on promotion. So, yeah, it's not good. Like, GMM TV is not always that great um, at what they do. <laughs> I think they are learning to some extent, but don't expect them to acknowledge anything because that's not happening, and we all know that. But I think it's no. healthy to call them out when they're doing something shitty. Um, but there's also a way to do it 
and going to war is just not it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we do love GMMTV for giving us interviews. <laughs> <laughs> we love the artists under GMMTV and like we'll yeah. obviously continue to support the artists and I think that they do put out a lot of good shows. Like mm-hmm. I'm eating up their content right now, Mm -hmm. so... I mean, I wouldn't be this openly critical if it wasn't some... Like, I wasn't enjoying what they're putting out. I think, like, when you are liking something, you can critique it without it being, like, a, a... like full right. on attack or yeah, something Yeah, exactly. Because we, we care about the people who are in GMMTV and mm-hmm. the artists who are in GMMTV. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a lot of that's where it stems from. You yeah. know, just like concern I, I for the artists. And I will say like the people we've we've talked to behind the scenes have been really nice and really mm-hmm. good and, and it's 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 been like a good relationship so yeah. far. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not all bad. Like it's a big company, so Good and bad sides. Yeah. So another type of war is ship wars be- within the same production. Mm. This is no where that second lead syndrome comes ship. in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of beef over like screen time happens, which mm-hmm. like for me, like the expectation is that like the main ship is going to get more screen time. Um, but there are, especially if like, I get it. If you're not enjoying like the main couple in a series, like you're going to want to see more of the couples that you're actually enjoying. But like, I also think that like the main couple is going to get more screen time. Now there have been some examples where it's just been like extreme, like, you know, people have gotten like two minutes of screen time when they were promoted as potentially like being a much bigger part of the show. Um, but you know, I think a lot of that, like, well, this is the better couple, so they deserve more screen time. It's very subjective. And, like, obviously, yeah. you're if you care about the second couple more, you're going to want to see more of them as opposed to the main couple. But mm-hmm. um, I just think from, like, a production standpoint of a television show, like, you just have to learn to expect that, like, the main couple in the series is going to get the majority of the screen time, mm-hmm. whether you care for them or not. Um, at least in... Um, dramas that are fully pre-produced because there have been examples of like K dramas because they're often like shot as the show is airing where they've like gone and like changed the script around because people have hated certain characters so much. Um, But that doesn't, most of the time BLs are pre-produced. And so like, we're not really going to see those type of changes or edits happening. Mm -hmm. And so like, I think it's just kind of like the struggle of second lead syndrome. Like if you're falling for the second lead, you're gonna you're gonna be yeah. I mean, stuck with them that's not why getting we have fan fictions, guys. Exactly. Just go read up that. Fix it your fix it one. fix. <laughs> <laughs> I think um I think like it's fine how they do BLs that they do like the the main couple gets the most screen time, the secondary, even though you kind of like Ram King obviously wants to see more of them <laughs> than the other ones. <laughs> but yeah. it's fine to do it like they do it. I think uh, we saw with um, with the Love in the Air how they did it there. And I did not like how they like mm. parted it into two series. It got, it, got, uh, it wasn't one show. It was two shows mm-hmm. put into one. And it felt so... I don't know. It didn't feel it didn't feel cohesive. And yeah. I think a lot of the issues I had with the second storyline would have uh gotten a little more um, I don't know, soften it a little bit if mm-hmm. it was mixed into the first storyline. Yeah. I I remember like when I first realized that with Love in the Air, they were going to focus the first half completely on Paiyu and Rain and the second half completely on Sky and Propai. Like, I was honestly kind of into it, but at the same time, when I went into the show, I thought that I was going to be, like, way more into the Sky and Propai couple than I ended up being. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think, like, the downfall of splitting it like that is that you spend the first entire half of the series getting people only attached to one pairing and then 
you completely shut, almost completely shut that pairing off and then spend the whole back half on a completely separate pairing. So I think that's like the intermingling of pairings throughout the episodes does more to kind of get you attached to all of the characters versus like there are people who didn't watch the first half of the series because they Mm -hmm. only wanted to see Sky and Papai. And then Mm -hmm. there are people who only watched the first half because they didn't want to see Sky and Papai in the second half. Um, So it's like, I think that's where the benefit of like weaving the stories together Mm -hmm. and having a more cohesive show where everything's tied together comes in. It was yeah. interesting to see it split up like that because I can't really think of other BLs where that's been yeah. done before. I, I mean, you have things like War of Why where like each section is its own yeah. contained story, but I think that feels a little bit different compared yeah. to what they did with Love in the Air. And even that is more mm-hmm. like tied together than Love in the Air was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I I didn't like it at all. Like, okay, they tried something new, but I think they um, it could have been so much better if they actually tied it in together. It mm-hmm. would have at least forced me to watch the prep eyes guys live. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the the yeah. Well, we're not talking about that show now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so another type of war is uh, ship force with same actors, different pairings. This is um, the big one in BL because no one wants to see their half of their ship act with someone else. And mm-hmm. I feel like this is the and it where a, a lot. lot of... Yeah. I think it's been mm-hmm. a lot more normalized lately. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that post that was going around on Twitter Um about Mark from GMM TV, how he's acting with like four different people in different yeah. shows this year. That's <laughs> but it was funny because they specifically used the term like Mark is getting passed around. And then he saw the tweet and quote <laughs> tweeted it. So, like, <laughs> oh my God. Just like they used the wording in the tweet was like, and the fact that he saw it was hilarious. Um, but that's what I'm like, saying. Like, they will see everything. <laughs> <laughs> literally. But like, <laughs> I think, like, we've seen more examples, particularly within companies like GMMTV, of them mixing up the ships. And it has had varying degrees of success and acceptance among fans. Um, But I do think it's becoming somewhat more normalized than it has in past years of the BL fandom. But I do think this is always going to be, like, one of the main places where ship fandom wars and BL stem from is this your actor moving on to act with someone else type situation like I'm like sitting here and just like thinking is it healthy to be shipping two actors who are never going to play together again I mean I think like um um C and Saint they still have an active fan fandom. Mm-hmm. Is that a healthy thing? It's not happening ever. Mm. We know that, and and <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah. I think it's like this indif- this this um, aspect of like enjoying the the show that they had and the ship time. I don't really know a word for that that they had together, but like you can do that without like harassing them to act together again which not to say that z and saint fans like i'm not calling them out specifically for have doing that done that but i think that is like there are fandoms out there where like they can't let go of that past ship so they Mm -hmm. carry it into the actor's next work so i think like you can have this aspect of i really love this ship and it's important Mm -hmm. to me and i enjoyed the time that they were together as a ship but like not go against like where they currently are as an actor if that makes sense yeah yeah and we did have some like very mm-hmm. um obvious examples of this happening you have perth Talay, and yoon um i think that was probably one of the examples where it resolved the best because yeah. perth Talay, and yoon are like Friends. very chill <laughs> people so like <laughs> The fandom was, like, not having a great time with it. And then they just started posting vlogs of the three of them, like, building Gundam together. And everyone chilled out. And, yeah. like, because they were so, like, they're all friends in real life. And, like, they kind of mm-hmm. push that aspect. Um, yeah. I think it 
helped ease the fandom minds a lot. And then, like, Yoon went on to act with... Ton? I'm forgetting his name. Ton. Thank you. Thank you. I'm forgetting everyone's name today. Ton. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, it went smoothly because, like, the Perth, Talaya, and Yoon situation had been resolved kind of smoothly. Like, his fans could accept him moving on to another ship a bit yeah. easier after that. I do think it has something to do with... Like, I think most of the people, like, shipping Perth and Tele shipped Ram King and not, oh, yeah. not Perth and Tele mm-hmm. because like Perth has been very open about like who he is and and it, they've never done like fan service the ship stuff. culture yeah yeah and they've talked about mm-hmm. that a lot that like yeah. that was kind of something they agreed on when my engineer promotion first started that they wouldn't really do a lot of fan service yeah. and so I think because That's both fine. of them have always been very chill about it like mm-hmm. It was hard. For, they've curated fandoms that like don't get super super up in arms about things. It obviously mm-hmm. has happened, um, but you know who they are as people and the way they approach their ship in the past, and even with like the Yoon and Talay ship, I think because of the type of project that Why Destiny was, like it didn't mm-hmm. really create a lot of fan service moments yeah. for people to kind of latch onto. Um, so it made like the whole I mean, transition. You honestly, <laughs> chemistry with anyone is <laughs> like Sorry. a cucumber can have more chemistry with a person than you. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> okay. Other okay, than that, but... like one of the more <laughs> more extreme, moving on. <laughs> one of the more extreme <laughs> extreme cases was uh. Cool Earth, uh, Cow, and Up. Mm. Especially, um, there was like this promotion thing happening. They had a poster uh, because Lovely Writer was just around the corner. Um, Cow and Up were pictured beside each other. Cool Earth was also going to be there. So his picture was on the other side of the poster, not beside Cow. And some fans rioted. Like to yeah. the point that the people I think it was... organizing it changed the poster. And I think didn't I don't know if this is a different event, but there was I think up eventually pulled out of the event. Like mm-hmm. it ended up mm-hmm. being like because Lovely Writer had an air jet, like yeah. Up was the one who ended up like not attending the event. Yes. Um because like the even I guess after changing the poster, oh, the like fandom outrage. was still very upset about it. Yeah. Outrage. It was crazy. Yeah. I remember we talked about that during one of our lovely writer episodes too, I mm-hmm. think. Um, but yeah, that's like one of the examples of like, it really shows like the consequences of like an artist having to pull out of an event that they were planned to go yeah, to and because... Yeah, I mean, Kyle and, and Kurt hadn't had like a show together in a long time. It had been like two years or at least yeah. a year and a half or something since Until We Meet Again. And True. they were barely um, in Until We Meet Again if we're gonna be honest. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that one um, that one surprised me. I, 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 I was taken aback about, about the like the pure wrath yeah. that went into something so small. Yeah. They're not dating, okay? Yeah. I mean, it's funny because, like, Kuhart and Cow still hang out a lot. And, like, they've yeah. been at a lot of, because Between Us promotions brought mm-hmm. in a lot of the old Until We Meet Again cast at, like, their um, premieres and stuff like that. So we've seen mm-hmm. a lot of, like, Kuhart and Earth lately. And I just think it's so funny when, like, these people are clearly still friends. Like, they still mm-hmm. hang out together and they still, yeah. like, spend time together despite being in another active ship because cow up and santa earth are both happening now but like at the time people were like so upset about it and then she's like they're just like we're chilling we're still friends guys (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then you have like the gavin first versus first cow tongue versus gavin god versus (laughs) debacle The whole Not square. Like me. <laughs> I find that so hilarious. These boys have like interchangeably been with each other in a show. And, yeah. Uh, 
And now we have Gawain and Crist, and Pod mm. is just out fishing all the time. So, you know. <laughs> Oh, and how time in the oak. Yeah, well, you, you know, I feel like that. Sh- I can't remember what's it. What's it called again? The new one. Only or- friends. Only friends. Yeah, I feel like that is mm. just like a, um, um, like a depiction of all like, uh, the messy, uh, interchangeable actors in BL shows for GMMTV. <laughs> it's just like a physical <laughs> manifestation of how a GMMTV have just been tossing around these boys in different shows trying to work out the chemistry (laughs) and they're like now we're gonna make it fictional and make everyone have sex with everyone (laughs) yeah yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot but people seem excited for it which is i'm so excited yeah i I think part of it is because like i think the end games are pretty clear like force and book and Cow tongue and first and mm-hmm. Mark and Neo, which is Ooh, the new one. Imagine but if they didn't do that. Imagine that would be if wild. They put the couples all like. Oh, if that happens, I will be really. I will be really interested to see how the fans react if they end up with like. We need to make a case hmm. study. <laughs> <laughs> study. <laughs> Write an academic paper on it. <laughs> oh, that would be. Okay. <laughs> no, that's like a train wreck. I would like sit back and watch. I just like nice. Six would be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's entertainment. It's, this is entertainment. <laughs> true, true. So <laughs> there's also um the single stance in BL space. Uh, so that's more like. Uh, this example we thought about was like the whole debacle with Mike and Top Tat, uh, because there was a fallout. Uh, not that it was a public fallout or anything. Mike just stopped following Top Tap on Instagram IG. or something. Yeah, yeah, and the fans picked up on it and started bothering Top Tap about it, and he's just like, I, I don't know. <laughs> So it was a huge deal that started from nothing. <laughs> yeah. And but we talked it, about it before. Yeah. It turned into a lot of like who was to blame for the fight situation. And I think that's an example of where you see a lot of solo stands of a particular actor coming mm-hmm. out to like defend their fave. Or I've seen a lot of it recently with um, Gawain. Now that he's acting mm-hmm. with Chris, um, a yeah. lot of fans of Gawain have been... Mm-hmm. Um, very vocal about like not necessarily being happy about the pairing mm-hmm. or the show type thing. Um, so I think it's like in situations like that where you see more like solo stands of an actor, particularly if they're not um, like Gawain isn't tied down to a ship at the moment or mm-hmm. wasn't before yeah. this uh, You Are My Favorite started filming. So mm-hmm. um, he really didn't have like a lot of shipper stands, I guess, behind him but like with Mike and Top Tap like until their fight they were like an active ship yeah. that people knew of so it was interesting we're to see like to be in a show as a mm-hmm. main couple mm-hmm. and then this so happened. yeah it was interesting to see how like the fans of the ship kind of like fell out to being like fans of the individual actors and where they kind mm-hmm. of took the line on that so mm-hmm. yeah I wonder if like the whole public debacle the fans made was what like sort of ostracized both Mike and Top Tap from having BL roles that the company just like okay we can't put you in anything because you're too problematic right now with fans mm. going crazy yeah I don't um, doubt that the the public the, the level that that fight too got to impacted their work mm-hmm. um I mean, I don't necessarily know, like, I know there was speculation that it wasn't really supposed to be Mike and Top Tap and You Are My mm-hmm. Favorite, which then became Mike and Chris, and now it's Chris and yeah, Someone said it was supposed to be Chris and Cinto, but because Cinto's... Oh, right, 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 and then Mike and Top Tap were gonna... But Mike and Top Tap, too, mm-hmm. so. so... But I, I like, it... My, Mike was supposed to do it with Chris, so I wonder mm-hmm. if this whole thing uh, made Mike withdraw from it or the company made him withdraw from it because of the whole 
I think. Yeah. Because Top Taps fans probably would have been very vocal about Mike being in the show because they perceive Mike to have done something wrong and vice versa. Mm. So whatever shows they did after that would have been really tainted by that. Which is why I'm just like, these fandom wars are really bad for the actors. Even if you're like um, trying to defend someone, you create like this really bad image for them. And it can impact their acting careers. I mean, I stand by my my belief that the reason that GMMTV never promoted He's Coming to Me, like at all, was because (laughs) they were afraid of the... Beaver reaction fans. that the Chris and Singto fans would have from seeing Singto in another ship. And obviously since mm-hmm. then Singto has acted with like a oh, whole God. bunch of different people, but because mm-hmm. that was his first BL project after Sodas, mm-hmm. I genuinely believe that was the reason that they did like zero promotion for that show, did not sub it at all originally, and like yeah. just like let it fly completely under the radar. Yeah. And I mean that was an like time where uh the their BL shows wasn't as popular as they are yeah now. we got like a couple of years still yeah. at that point yeah you know so the international presence um for the company and stuff have, have gotten them to a whole different level so i think that's why you can have like this only friends thing now mm. is because of the height and i think um the controversies around the fandom wars actually give them more views no, definitely. Then it yeah. would have. Hate watching is a thing. Definitely. Which, like, I, people hate hate watch. I things. will watch something I hate so I can bitch about it. <laughs> right? Because you need to know the context to be able to, to be bitch able to about bitch it. About it. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So, do you think fandom wars help production companies make money? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely think they yeah. do. I do think it depends on the company as well. I mm-hmm. think the company needs to be able to fend the storm. Yeah. And big companies like GMMTV has that. But if it was like a small indie company or whatever, I don't think that would be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But in general, I think they drive people to be more vocal about supporting the ship that they favor and thus driving money in that direction. Mm -hmm. And while other fans are supporting the ship that they favor and thus driving money in that direction. And in the end, it all comes back to the company getting money, (laughs) thriving off of the competition. I'm going to watch the show, stream Mm -hmm. it a lot of times just to Mm -hmm. beat that other show or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, they use it in K-pop all the time too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have anything, Kayla? Oh, I was going to say that even... Um, I see that even with, like, trending hashtags that are mm-hmm. negative. Like, the fact that there's a hashtag trending is still considered a good thing, even if it's yeah. against <laughs> yeah. the That's production, true. whatever. Clout is clout. That's what people <laughs> say. Clout is clout. Promo is promo. Mm-hmm. So... Why do you think people engage in fandom wars? We kind of answered this earlier as well. Yeah. I think people just are very passionate and Mm -hmm. misdirect that passion down the avenues that it shouldn't really be directed in. Whether you're passionate about wanting better for your fave or just passionate about really enjoying something that, you know, is very special to you. I think when you see things that kind of interrupt that, you misdirect that passion into Mm. avenues that it shouldn't be going down um and so i think a lot of it just comes from like being very very passionate about whatever your thing may be yeah do you think like people just want to be a part of something at times like i think so there's a lot there's like a hive mentality yeah yeah you know if everyone in your fandom is like rallying against this other fandom or trending this hashtag exactly you want to be out on the battlefield. 
<laughs> the front it's lines. It's like the like American the army lines. mentality. It literally, <laughs> like, literally. It's called ship, it's ship wars for a, it's called a war for a reason. Like the, yeah. the analogy to war. Who did we have? I think it was maybe Ari that we kind of had that conversation with that like the analogy to it being a war is like legit because they'd be yeah. fighting on the front lines like <laughs> virtually, <laughs> but they are doing it. They are, even if someone, like, no one asked them to. <laughs> Quite the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I don't really, like, for me, fandom wars, there's no point in doing it. There's, um, as fans, like, I see the company's standpoint on it. As fans, I don't see any point in it. Mm. It's not doing anything good. Like, zero good. It often, like, space. doesn't benefit the actor or the ship or the show the way people might expect it to. Um, so I think, you know. Yeah, the... and it doesn't benefit you as a person to yeah. sit there and get angry and no. just, like, just keep getting angrier Stew and Stew in that rage, yeah. Just, like, that's what he says said, like, hole. it takes the enjoyment out of something that you were originally into because it brought you joy. But if you're just spending all your time arguing or on twitter.com or wherever you may be like are you still enjoying it at that point i don't i mean i guess it depends on right. the individual but for me like that is not enjoyable to me you know as a fan i don't know do you think fandom wars and ship wars will ever go away no 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 <laughs> Because they, I mean, they've like, been around, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Kayla. They, like Alexa was saying, they've been around literally before the internet. And with the internet, it's like you are bound to have people fighting when you have so mm -hmm. many different people from different cultures, different walks of life, who all have different perspectives on something and have like yeah. their own personal reasons why they like a show or a person. Like people are always going to be fighting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't see that ending ever <laughs> for as yeah, long as the world goes on. As long yeah. as we have fandoms, there will be fandom wars. Yeah. But yeah. like we said in the beginning, like you can curate your own experience by basically blocking out the wars happening around you. Yeah. Block out the stuff that doesn't bring you joy and just focus on the stuff that does. Yeah. So, basically, even though we all enjoy BL, people tend to get very defensive and angry when someone express they don't like a show or if they like a show so, with very targeted anger. And we should all just unite in our love for BL instead of fighting over which shows is the best one. That's like the general advice. As you said <laughs> earlier, one fandom under BL. One fandom, <laughs> <laughs> one fandom under BL. It's I love it. I love that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's giving me um like the Woodstock um hippie <laughs> vibe, which I I'm really into. I'm really about the like all love, mm -hmm. one love thing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean like even us, we're bound to get angry about things. Yeah, and then go and tweet about it, post about it. Um, and I Complain think that like generally. <laughs> yeah, generally yeah. like complaining about something that we don't like Fine. in a show or like something that's happening to an actor that we don't mm -hmm. like, that's one thing. Because a lot of the time, as we said, it comes back to the source, which is mm -hmm. the company and how mm -hmm. they're promoting. So like there really is no point to fight others <laughs> about yeah. it. Yeah. There really isn't. No. Because yeah, it just, it almost also, like, the message of it gets buried, too, like, what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I, exactly. So, yeah. Yep. 
That is all the wisdom we can bestow <laughs> onto you. <laughs> Our love cast wisdom. <laughs> What's that wise? <laughs> So this is it for our episode this week. Uh, we'd love to hear your take on Fandom Wars. Let us know in the comments on or on our social media. Once again, just a reminder, we are fundraising for our Thailand trip. So make sure you go check out our Kickstarter. We also uh, will do live streams on YouTube where you can donate. Um, we have coffee patreon merch many avenues of mm-hmm. donation even just merch. Um, a, merch. yeah merch and um, even just like um donation to our paypal works mm-hmm. so thank you for to everyone who has donated thank you to everyone who will donate and we are super excited for it to happen yes 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 So thank you for listening this week and we will see you again next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Oh, I can't go to Australia. I'm too deathly afraid. Oh, it's fine. It's <laughs> no, fine. no. Everything wants to kill uh, you. I am. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here, and I grew I up climbing trees, and luck. swimming in creeks. And- <laughs> yeah, <My> luck. <laughs>